I'm Joe Williams, the voice of reason. If your relationship is in trouble, I'm the dude to call. Has your soulmate become your cellmate? Does black love still exist? What are your bedroom turnoffs? Fantasies and fetishes. Financial infidelity. I'm dating a fat person. Are they worth the wait? Trust me, this gonna be crazy. How about the heavy stuff? The child wasn't here, and he still had to pay child support. It's a very heated topic. How oh, was that right? Mama's baby, daddy's maybe. I just have so many questions I want to ask you. I just like to kiss on one of them. Is there something wrong with that? Damn. <laughs> he told me he had a vasectomy. I'm pregnant. Trail has been committed. He hit you with a bad yes. hydro routine. How does he maintain his humpacity? He likes it when it pinches my neck. Why can't you open up, brother? I'm a karate man. Karate man rules on the inside. They don't show their weaknesses. Yeah. How do you write women so well? So William. Reason and accountability. The voice of reason. And just falling down the steps, yeah. happy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the voice of reason, yeah. Zoe Williams. I am the VOR. Back in the building, hot button radio, dash radio. Before I even get any of this started, let me give a shout out to a chef here in Hollywood. Man, listen. She just opened a restaurant right down the street. Probably the best lunch I've had since being here at Dash Radio. Mm -hmm. The name of the restaurant is Bella Julia. What is that street? Is it Yucca? Yucca? Yucca. Yucca, Yucca. It's right there Mm. off of Kawanga. I mean, you know, I don't be promoting nobody's stuff like that. The chef's name is Shaza Smith. Originally trained in France, French cuisine. Then she was pretty much jumped on when she started to study Italian cuisine. Don't come in here with that French stuff. You're going to learn it our way. But let me tell you how talented this young lady is. The food was retarded. As a matter of fact, I couldn't finish eating it because we had some starving co-hosts come in here. And they have promptly... Devoured. devoured it. Right. Damn right we did. What, what were we supposed to do? You, ain't, hey. you can't put no free sandwich in front of me without <laughs> getting it done. Was it delicious, though? It was fantastic. Wow. It was ridiculous. Mind so blown. I just wanted to send a quick shout out to Shaza Smith at Bella Julia. You got to go. If you're in the Hollywood area, Yuka Kawanga, go see her. It's, it's a real situation over there. Now, let's get to down to, 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 to business. Business. Part three of our series on racism. Will racism end in our lifetime? Some people believe that racism is here forever. Permanent. We've already had two series. Part one was last Monday. We had Dr. Joy DeGruy. When I tell you she smacked the taste out of everybody's mouth with her intellectual breakdown. Her intellectual pugilism. She was awesome. Uh, And then, (sighs) exhibit immortal technique. That was part two. Immortal, jeez. Johnny Mac from the Foxhole Days was in here. Slayed. So let me just say real quick, we were supposed to have David Banner today. Yep. His people reached out to me and they had to reschedule. Mm. They're not going to be here today. But that's okay. Because this show is about solutions. I'm going to open up the phone lines, 323-230-4445. And if there's anybody within the, the reach, the sound of my voice, with a viable solution for racism, I need you to call me. All right? Before I even go any further, let me intro the crew. Sitting right in front of me with a massively delicious ass. I haven't tasted it yet, but I hear her say she has a delicious derriere. You know, I, can I order that from Bella Julie? I don't know. But she's in the building. Comedian, actress, extraordinaire. Arana Lopez. Ah, uh, yes. 
I had to clear my throat because I was still swallowing them meatballs. Listen, guys. Oh, how we doing? Not. Yeah. <laughs> I had to turn down Dix today. Dix, uh, D-I-X, guys. She talking get about your the mind street. Out the, yeah, get your minds <laughs> off the gutter. Hollywood traffic was so terrible. I'm just happy to be here, guys. Ronda Lopez, how y'all doing? Shot town what's up? Word, word, word. And then in studio, she was here early today, which is a rarity. I was on time. Wrong. Well, yeah, you were on time. <laughs> but she didn't spend any time with us. She was talking to her friend. She was pop locking, centipeding. Team Tabor, ladies and gentlemen, Whitney Tabor in the building. Yeah, happy Friday, man. It's actually Blue Friday, guys, in case you guys didn't know. Go Hawks. I'm excited for this week's game. Wait, hold on, hold on. Let me. What? what is Blue Friday? Blue Friday is what real people who like really actually support their team, unlike like a lot of the 49ers fans, they don't really support their team. I support my team all the time. So Blue Friday is when 12s like myself rep our team. I get it. You yeah. feel me? Get ready for the okay, cool. get ready for the win on Sunday. Blue so, um, means you guys are always sad because you're always losing. That's okay, fine. Okay, we well. appreciate it. Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. And scene. Veronica <laughs> Conway is in the building <laughs> too, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Hi, it's rowdy. Y'all are rowdy at the Met Joint. This hey, Friday. come on! It's Hi. Friday. We gotta be rowdy. That's it. That's what's <laughs> up. That's what's up. Hey, Veronica. Ronica. Hey, y'all. Ronica. <laughs> Wait, Ronica ain't going nowhere. That is. No, that's, that's it. Ronica. It's dope. Uh, All right, so so really quickly, let's get serious. Let's 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 get deep. Let's pull it in. And sing. Separation. Is separation of the races the only way to end racism? Hmm? Hmm. Yeah. Well, let's go the other way. Let's go the opposite of separation. Let's go the promotion of interracial relationships. Is that the best way to end racism? Or would that bring about more confusion? I just want to know, how do we end it? So many people believe that it can't be ended. I said it can be ended because it is just an idea. People can stop believing in the idea of racism, Mm -hmm. right? Racism is, hey, I'm better than you, right? Right? I'm better than you. Now, we can get rid of the idea, but how do we get rid of the societal infrastructure that's in place? How do we get the judges and the courts to say, okay, we're going to stop sentencing black kids for the same crimes that white kids commit We're going to stop sentencing them to 79 years for that crime. Mm. And then, you know, the young white kid will get a year or or less. And then uh, you can get out on, you know, good behavior, you know, probation, right? We do know that there's a disparity, you know, between, um, you know, sentencing for blacks, right? Black men in particular. And then we talk about the real estate bubble. You know, certain neighborhoods, you can't get into that neighborhood because of, you know, your ethnicity. It's still that way now. Banking, all the infrastructure that is in place to reinforce racism. How do we break that down? Solutions, solutions, solutions. My team is in the building right now, and I want to hear from you. I want to know, how in the hell do we get it done? Arana, are you going to take a white man and just create a... A Tay Diggs ambiguous child. No. Racially ambiguous child. Because that's what Tay Diggs is doing right now. I say the the N word way too much to be comfortable with that. Listen, um, (laughs) I might make him uncomfortable. He'd be like, girl, slow down. Even I don't talk like that. Hmm. So, um, you know what? I don't know. It's, it's, I definitely feel like racial mixing has started the conversation because they say, by the year 2020 or whatever, like the majority of the world will be mo- mostly colored because we have all been mixed in some way, shape or form. Um, I think that's a step in the right direction, but without the useful knowledge and the conversations and proper legal uh, things in place, I don't really think that's going to change much. It's just going to cause even more confusion and divisiveness. Mm. I'm going to have to uh, disagree with Arana. I think that mixing and becoming one so we all kind of understand. Like, I understand where white people are coming, and I also understand where black people are coming from because I have both 
integrated in myself. So I think that if we all just said, you know what, oh, we're Americans, let's create our own narrative and mix it up and create a bunch of biracial butterflies and float around and be happy and shit. Uh, Here's why I think that uh, won't work. It doesn't yeah. even work for Quincy Jones's kids. Like Rashida Jones. Shit, man, don't, hey, hold Listen, on now. Don't Rashida talk Jones, about my children, you know. She said, uh, she said that Listen she here. always felt like she had to pick one and because, you know, her sister more so identified with black, she was able to kick it with, like, Tupac and them. But she really wasn't. And so she felt by default she had to identify like that when she went to Harvard. But then she still felt left out. So, like, what I'm saying is without the proper, you know what I'm saying, social implications and stuff like that, we'll be mixed. But, but see, don't you what? think it's easier to to claim racial ambiguity when one of the races are maligned, you see what I'm saying? Like if, which, okay, I'm mixed with white mm-hmm. and black. Blacks ain't shit in the media. Cops, rappers, thugs, sports guys beating up their white. Uh-uh. No, you, I'm not going to identify with black. I'm going to identify with white because white is right. Okay. Tell me that isn't a social construct. I'm not saying it's not a social construct, but I'm saying what is that going to fix if people decide to do that, but then there's still half, then what? Interesting. There is no half. Well, okay, so then it, it just it all erases and there's no black at all. Is it, you, no, 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 no. Everything is black. Mm. I just don't feel mm. like that's necessarily going to no, work. Hey, I'm sorry. Listen. If we, I think everybody I'm gonna go, will be wait, pretty, though. Wait, I'm going to go to Veronica. Okay. VC, get in here. Give me your yes. yes. Give me your breakdown. Okay, so a couple of things. So racism. Understand the only reason that racism exists is to keep the black man from fucking. That's the whole point. But that was that's <laughs> the root cause. That's the root cause of it is to keep the black man from fucking because white people have a fear of genetic annihilation. In other words, they're twelve percent of the planet, and if everybody got together and fucked tomorrow, then guess what? Whiteness would cease to exist in three generations. Now, if you don't, you don't have to take my word for it, because if you ever go to, if you ever want to feel depressed, go to stormfront.org, where all the white nationalists hang out. And they talk about it in terms of their genetic annihilation. Diversity is genetic annihilation. That is the root cause fear of what drives the, the entity of racism on planet Earth. Okay, so that's one thing. Separation is, is already, by definition, happening. It's just happening on one side because our black asses didn't design it or intend it. Separation has been happening. That's what they've been doing this whole time. We're just at the effect of it, and we just keep going, hey, what's happening? I don't Like Chris Rock even said, I live next door to a dentist, right? I'm black, the most, one of the most famous comedians on planet Earth. I live next door to a dentist. So, so, so what I'm saying He was saying basically is, saying the white man could be it's, it's, average. He could be regular in society average. and still live Correct. in that gated community, whereas the black man, in order Correct. to get in that community, has to be a megastar. I see what you're saying. The most famous comedian on earth, practically. So we have to understand that we're already living in separation. And so we just have to begin to be get real about the reality of it. It's already here. See, this is what I, I agree with you, Veronica, because like I said, racial mixing won't fix it because at the end of the day, if propaganda and ideas are still present, it doesn't help anything. For example, we could take race out of the picture and just use a family. You can be in the same family, but if your father started telling you lies about your mother and you pick a side and your sister pick a side and y'all don't pick the same side, even with the same identity and the same blood, y'all still going to believe different things and carry out different actions. And I think across the board, that's just what it is. Even with the Black Lives Matter movement, all this stuff that's going on, anybody with a human heart can look and go, that is not right. But you still have people going, but no, but yeah, but no. It's just propaganda can ruin everything. That's all I'm saying. Ideas. Hmm. Krishnamurti. The world is separated by conceptual thinking. Go deeper, Whitney. My, My thing is, if we all are the same... Instead of putting each other in boxes, nope, I'm black. I, I, no, I'm I'm a human being. Why don't we just start looking at people like human beings? Mm-hmm. This is why More. I love you. That's I love why. you. I, lo- I love you. This is what I'm saying. I, I get you. it. I get it. We got a hard struggle and this, that, and the other, and whoop de whoop de whoop. But we're ke- we're keeping it going by having a conversation. I, let me just say, 
I, I love Whitney. <laughs> but let me just can can do you boo boo do you? There is okay. no listen. Somebody <laughs> created the box, but it wasn't us. Yes, right. When I say us, I mean black people. Word. Black people didn't create the box. Nah. Listen, my friend wrote a book called "Poisoned Minds: Wicked Words." Mm. This dude, he went to Harvard. Harvard educated brother from the hood, from Watts, from the Nickerson Gardens. Now when you see him, he's he's like Carlton Banks from, you know, the Fresh Prince. He's like, I studied at Cambridge, you know. I'm like, nigga, you from? I play cricket. <laughs> right. You from Niggas and Gardens. That's where you're from. But what's amazing about this brother, the, the, uh, the, his name is Furpo Carr. Oh, right. right? Very super intelligent dude. Virgo also. <laughs> hey, Virgo. <laughs> one of the, I mean, he's one of my good friends. He went and broke down the origin of every word in Webster's Dictionary and proved that it had a racial origin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like, for instance, yep. the word gorilla. Some white man went to Africa in the 1800s and saw some gorillas and said, oh, I'm going to name them gorilla from the Greek word hairy African woman. He thought they were women. He thought that they were African. These are gorillas. Gorilla means hairy African woman. Damn. Just and he has so many, so many more, right? Of these particular terms, where he broke them all down. Poison is word. Poison mind. Racism is an ideological infrastructure. Now, white people of today can't be blamed for constructing the infrastructure. But they, it has to be brought to their attention that you benefit from this structure playing in the background of your life. Mm -hmm. Now, a couple of things that I will offer as my ideation for the end of racism. Here's that phone ring and let's get to it. Right. A couple of things I would offer. Number one, white people got to uh, black people got to stop accepting the white standard of everything. The white narrative of everything, the white narrative of history, the white narrative of religion, the white narrative of success. Like we have to say, that's your narrative. This is this is what we think God is. This is what we think success and wealth is. Right. But then on the other end, white people have to say, wow, we've benefited from a system. I'm talking about white people of today. We've benefited from a system that's designed to keep people down educationally. Financially, socioeconomic, the whole nine. We got to. But do you think white people will ever give up the power? White people are like Senator mm -hmm. Palpatine. Nope. <laughs> they like Senator Palpatine Who in Star it? Wars. Okay. Okay, nigga, the, the, the war is over. The Clone War is over. You got to give up the power of the Senate. Mace Windu and the crew roll in there with the, with the Jedi roll in and say, come on now. You got to give up power. I am the Senate. <laughs> and then you find out that he's the bad guy in the movie. Boom. I'm not giving up the power. Will white people give up the power of this infrastructure that's in place? Mm. I'm, I'm told that our phone lines have reverted back to its original number. Anybody want to call 844-55-1 is the number to dial? That's 844-55-1. Hey, it's quite all right. All right. Let's give out the line again, 844-55-1. We live in a world, I mean, look, racism is happening. Bigotry is happening in the media right now. Do you see these Arabs coming out saying, hey, 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 we're not all, we're not all, you know, terrorists, right? Terrorists is like the mm -hmm. new nigger word. It's the new N-word for Arabs. Mm -hmm. An Arab does not mm -hmm. want to be caught. That's, that's stereotype threat. So when you see an Arab, a Muslim, he's like, fuck, they automatically don't think I'm a, imagine the anxiety it is for people who are just trying to get through life and do what we all do, you know, pay our bills and chill. And even that was something that was constructed and now they're just going overboard with it recently. Like any and everything that happens, they want to try to make some effort to attach some Muslim somebody to it when they may or may not have anything to do with it at all. Mm. So I think people just need to be educated and know what they think in their own minds. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm just saying, I feel like 
education is pretty much what's going to help end it because I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to listen to what you guys are telling me I have to do or think because I have my own brain, so I'm going to use it. That's, like that. that's how I, I live my life. I so it's like, hey, I'm black and white and people try to put me in a box, but guess what? No, I do what I want. But even white is black. Uh, okay. My guy right here. I'm going to get to you, Veronica. I know. I, I, could, I can feel <laughs> your, your tail wagon. I got you. My guy, John, our engineer. He's Italian. <laughs> Italians, especially Southern Italians, Sicilians, the Moors was all up in that Yoni box. We changed the whole... What is the name of that movie where... What's his name? The actor Robert... Uh, what's his... I forgot the De actor's Nero. name. No, no, no. <laughs> That's the only one He's in there with Christopher Walken. What's but I forgot the name of the movie and the name of the actor, but he broke it all the way down. And it's real... History backs this. When the Moors King came... King of New York? No. Okay. No, no, no. How old is this movie? Casino. No, it's none of those movies. Godfather. You guys are terrible. Stop. You're telling me you're giving us nothing Jesus. to work with. All right, just, that was Chris Scarface. Right, Boom, no? Just, no? I ain't seen him since the Jamiroquois video. Okay, we, we've had enough. Christopher what is it? Walken. True Romance. Christian Slater. No, it wasn't Christian Slater. Oh, uh, that was the best movie. One of my favorite movies of right. all time. But he oh sat God. down and yes, talked yes. about the history of the Moors. Listen, the guy who gave us the picture of Jesus Christ today, right? That was a pope. His name was Rodrigo Borgia, right? When he became Pope, he became uh, Alexander Sextus, right? He was from Spain. The Moors were, we they conquered Spain for 900 years. Now, we look at our, you know, life over here in America, 400 years. We had Spain. We changed the name of Spain. It wasn't Spain once we got there. It was, okay, it will no longer be called this. Well, Al Andalusia. What is that? The land of the Vandals. Mm. This is what we named it. It is nothing but Vandals here. Let's clean this up. Right? They built the Alhambra. You know what's crazy? Alhambra over here, the mm. city just south of Pasadena. Well, the high school over there is called the Alhambra Moors. Mm. <laughs> That's history that they don't teach black people. The only history they teach black people, this is why I say we have to gain, con, regain control of education so we can say, oh no, no, this is our history here. So when I say white people are black, I'm saying white people can't escape their African heritage. They can't. See, this is why I say we didn't create black and white. Black people didn't create black and white. Those classifications. The black person is the first human being. So when you say human, it's black. Hue is color. Mm -hmm. Man. The colored man. The black man. Hue man. That's us. The hue. Come on now. So I think we can't end racism then with your facts given, Zo. We can. We can't. We can't. I'll tell you what. I got a solution. We got to stop. But we got to stop creating things like, I got you, Veronica. I'm coming to you right after this. We have to stop creating things like biracial. Yeah. You're not biracial. You're black. My great grandfather was white. (laughs) My grandfather's daddy was white. That's where the browning comes from. But both my parents are black. How about it? As light as my father is, my father has freckles. I'm black. Black. But don't you guys think it's kind of rude for me not to, I guess... You you have to acknowledge your father. He raised exactly. you. He's your daddy. Well, I'm not saying He's don't your acknowledge him. But I'm not saying don't acknowledge him. Do so I'm, that's I, what I'm saying. I'm not calling you daddy. Get your daddy on the phone. <laughs> you got a job, man. Call that's your daddy. That's hilarious. I guarantee you. <laughs> you your, I guarantee you. Your father sees you as a black girl. Yeah. He don't see you as biracial. He, that's a black girl. And anybody who walk in here see oh, Whitney man. right now, they be like, "There's a black girl." One of the light skinned delights of the black race. <laughs> light light skinned delights. Yummy. Why are you making it sound like a snack? <laughs> no, that's my Veronica. Get in group. here. <laughs> oh, that was the singing group. That's my well, singing group. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at it from a different angle because I think what is true is that we have to take away the profit motives because understand that profit that that there's profit and demonization of racial groups. It's profitable. So if you think about mm. the Iraq War. 
or all the industrial mm-hmm. complexes, whether it's beauty or religion or prison or war, there's money in making, in demonizing people, right? There's money in demonizing the black female and the standard of beauty. And by doing that, what do you do? You convince her to go out and get that weave and get that skin lightning bleach and buy her way into an artificial standard of beauty. It's the same with the prison industrial complex. When we talk about, you know, Alec and the stand your ground laws, there's like there was corporate profit in building we can kill Negroes at will law. There was because all the big corporations like Coca Cola and they were all involved in it. So I think that a certain way we again we have to know what we're actually looking at. It started out in a um, racism started out because of a certain way it evolved into what it's evolved into. But now the profit motive that is so baked into the entire system, people get paid off of demonization. That's why that's, we, we justified Halliburton, right, and, and Dick Cheney and George Bush going to war in Iraq and blowing up half the brown world and getting paid for it. Mm. We, because we get, and that's why we demonize Arabs today, because you can't go in and wholesale destroy a nation without first demonizing the people in your mind ahead of time. So I think we have to but begin listen, to look at it a lot more strategically. She's, listen, what she just outlined is what the Patriot Act. Listen, Act let me just is say, what she just outlined. Let me just say, us. this is an old formula. And it worked so well. So World War II. Come on now. With Hitler yep. and the Jews. The Jews had to be demonized. They were demonized and attacked. And Germany was was broke. And it was a race war. And Germany was broke. Um, American corporations, you know, like Henry Ford, you know, building tanks. But what they were doing, putting them under shell corporations. and Coca-Cola was in Germany, but not as Coca-Cola. When the war started, they they took the signage of Coca-Cola out and brought in Fanta. (laughs) <laughs> so that's a Coca-Cola product, Fanta. We ain't going to say Coca-Cola here in Germany, but we're going to keep making this bread. Heard. Come on. All of the, the industrialists in America made major money off that war. And it was, whether you like it or not, it was a race war. The, the purified Aryans of Germany, the Nordics versus the, uh, the, the, the oh, these uh, genetically impured Jew, impure Jews, right? Mm-hmm. This was a race mm-hmm. war, and they're using the same formula today. Right. And see, what it takes is a dynamic speaker who can sell you dreams and make everything sound right. You need people that are economically disenfranchised, like the Germans were, and they broke. And when you broke, you angry, and you want answers, and you want to know where's the money. And if he go, well, they got the money, and they took it, you like, well, then that, we got to go get them. And that's that's how you got an entire nation to stand behind him. Because the thing about Hitler that's so interesting to me, yeah, he was evil, blah, 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 but he didn't act alone. He was. He, he was, didn't act he, alone. Right. And they never do. And so it's like, you know what I mean? I love the scapegoat theory of we'll just take this one person, but then you got to forgive all of us. And it's like, no, y'all was in on it, too. You turned a blind eye. You know, so like even with the like the police brutality thing that we were talking about the last episode where we were like, is there any such thing as a good cop? And it's like, well, not necessarily if people are also aware of the cover up and they do nothing. Mm. Then you killed them, too. Mm. Ugh. Ugh. The phone lines are cracking. They are. Listen, the number to dial is 844-55-1. I need you to get at me right now. 844-55-1. I want to hear your solution. For racism, pardon me. I don't, you know, we still belching these meatballs. It's so That's horrible. what's happening. Jesus, it's really terrible. It right was now. so good. The minister, Minister Farrakhan, mm-hmm. he's like separation is the key. Really? Where separation? are we going to go? Where Where do black people in America even got to go? Where are we going to go? Already separated. There it is. But his thing is, just imagine, you look at Black Friday. You look at the $1.7 trillion that we are scheduled to spend uh, for, you know, well, we've already spent it. We're we're in December now. So (laughs) $1.7 trillion of consumerism that comes from the African-American community alone. 
the number one the number one vehicle that is purchased by African Americans is the BMW. But BMW right. does not put any money back into the community that spends the most money Correct. with them. Correct. So do you see how there's a misappropriation of funds on a collective level, although we're not a collective? Jeez, Correct. man, this is ugly. I don't know. This is ugly. What are your solutions? I want to know. How are we going to do this? Will racism ever end? I'm going to take a quick break, but when I come back, the phone lines are all yours to tell me where we're going to go. Yo, John, take us out. We're taking a break. We'll be back in 2.2. Wow. 90s hip hop. We were angry. But is it righteous indignation? I don't know. Get to your phone lines, 844-55-1. That is the number to dial. I want to know, can racism be cured? If racism is a type of sociological cancer, can it be cured? Would black people have to let go of perpetual victimhood? Mm. Would white people have to let go of pathological altruism Mm. I'm better than you allow me to help you you know you know when helping hurts Mm. Mm -hmm. I I, you know that pagan belief you have you need white Christ right remember I was talking about the Pope Borgia right Alexander Sextus comes from Spain right when he got the papacy they called him a white ape they called him a white ape because Spain was ruled for seven eight hundred years by the Moors thoroughly you know the Moors came in and got that thing going hooked up with all them lovely French ladies or Spanish ladies mixed it right on up Hmm. called him a you know the papacy has you know is in the hands of a white Ape. Go watch the Borgia series that HBO put out. That I watched that. There was so much science in that. I mean, it was very powerful stuff. Right? His son, Chazare Borgia, posed and they painted a picture of Chazare. Chazare the bull. That picture is now the picture of white Jesus hanging in um, Florida Evans' house. (laughs) What's crazy is I went to college with somebody named Cesare. I didn't even know. I thought that was a chef. Cesare is just Italian for Caesar. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, you're going to be a ruler. Cesare. Shout out to Cesare who went to U of I. I didn't even know your greatness, brother. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Your name been ruler this entire time. (laughs) We was in the choir together and everything, and I didn't even know. Right? Get but on down. that's what the Russians call themselves czars. Czars is another way of Caesar. It's another way of saying Caesar. They call themselves czars. hmm Right? His phone lines is jammed. Ha. It's crazy. Right? So you got that going on. Oh, and by the way, uh, Rodrigo Borgia, the Pope, his daughter, Lucrezia, Mm-hmm. Posed, and her image became the image of Mary. <laughs> Lucrezia is that what people use as Lucretia these days? Yep. No. Not, I got. I got like six Lucretias in my hood. <laughs> Lucretia is the hood name for Lucrezia. So it's, it is Lucrezia. No. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't think Lucretia, Lucretia and Lucrezia are mixed. I don't. Why not? Why can't she be great? Why can't it be like she, Sheree and Sheree? Because she know? hood <laughs> from the Atlanta Housewives. She, Her name is clearly Sheree, but she want to be called Sheree. Yeah. They're clearly Lucretta, but they, you know, it's Lucretia because maybe they didn't know. Well, listen, we don't know what we're talking about. I'm hoping Somebody that our know. callers have a faint idea. Because I don't know. Of don't how know. to end racism. So I'm going to Mr. Z from Miami, line three. You're on the line, Mr. Z. Holler at us. What's going on, everybody? How are you, brother? How art thou? What's going on? I wanted to address something that Whitney said earlier. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so Whitney, you talked about um, being mixed and everything like that and how that might end racism. The reason I disagree is because you could just look at, look at Latin America and see that that doesn't work. So as the lighter and whiter Spanish people still run everything. Mm. Right. So that mix, Brazil is a prime example. You know what I'm saying? Puerto Rico is a prime example. Argentina. Cuba is Haiti. A prime, Argentina. Argentina. Philippines. Yeah. Argentina Dominican Republic. Level. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, and I yeah. want to say, I want to clean up what I said on Wednesday and when Immortal, you know, had a rebuttal for what I said, I was pre I wasn't saying individual. I'm Haitian descent. So obviously I know about two cents and Dessaline and, and Bookman. But what I was trying to say is we don't have systems and institutions to keep us from ha- if Europe wanted to invade America, I mean Africa today, there's nothing that's stopping them. That's what I was trying to say. We're in the same position economically and financially and militarily that we were in five hundred years ago, you know? That's what I was trying to say on Wednesday. Well, hey, man, I thank you for calling right. back and getting it in. This platform yeah. is your platform. You could do that, Mr. Yeah, Z. Man. Anytime you want to call in and drop yeah. some information, you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a very yeah. valid point. Very valid. We yeah. appreciate the call. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. Call anytime. The number to dial is 844-55-1. I want solutions to the race problem in the world. Do you think if blacks and whites killed the racial animosity and enmity that exists between those two that all other races would somehow follow suit? Would Chinese people be looking at Japanese like, oh, it's all good. We Mm. peoples. We weeples now. Nope. Right? I'm just saying. I think what it's going to really take is more psychological reconditioning, seriously, because... Even what the point that he brought up, uh, you could you could use Asian Americans or Asians as an example. You can use Latinos as an example. Puerto Ricans really don't like Mexicans. They really don't like Panama. Like they really and, don't, and, and they're and, all Spanish. We're not even involving white people and other people into our solution. Right? They're all Spanish. So there's a sense of self hatred in racial identity. There's a sense of community hatred. Like you know what he was just talking about Haiti and Dominican Republic. They're both on the island of Hispaniola. Both of them. They're neighbors. Right. But and one side Republic is rich, gets one more money poor, and more right. funding and more support for sure. Well, that's because Haiti, Haiti wasn't taking no play. They they right. kicked ass. That's because they Haiti weren't taking no ass. prisoners. Yeah, mm. that's mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. You can't stand up to the band and then they want him to support you. Crazy, Veronica, and then Whitney. I know Veronica yeah, has something I mean, to say. Yes, come that's, on, that's, in, baby. That's, I just think it's, I just think we have to understand to Arana's point how we've been conditioned and trained, and the programming. See, people just don't understand that psychological warfare precedes physical warfare in, in, in all dimensions. So, in other words, you have to have the, the people of color assume an inferior psychology before you can go in and feel and have the, you know, go in and basically do physical warfare with them, political warfare with them, right? And you have to demonize them. And so, and then you have to have them demonize themselves. So, if they don't have the will, that like we have learned helplessness. So, we don't. We think that, that the status quo is the status quo. That's why I'm such a big thing on, on understanding how to reprogram internalized depression. Because until we understand that we are colluding with the psychological warfare that's been enacted against us, until we understand that we are in participation and partnership with our enemies mm. towards our demise, until we understand our own agency in that process... We will never solve it because it will always operate from the perspective of victim, and we're not. But, the, but in other words, for 12% of the planet to control the other 88%, for 1% of the planet to control the other 99% economically, I've got to do a number on you that has you believe down to your toenails that you're a victim. That's how the game works. Learn she talking about she talking about them reverend prostitutes that went and had a meeting with Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. See, and didn't want to meet with Farrakhan. See now, see this is a right. See, I this I is, it. I, this I is part it. of the problem in our community. We got too many people in our community that's willing to do business with the status quo. Mm-hmm. You're doing business with the status quo. When I say diversity, right, empowers racism. Because diversity is me asking you to acknowledge me within the framework of the system that is is existing, the -hmm. pre-existing system. The system itself has to be overhauled, not let me come to you and say, give me opportunity within this system. That's just like that's just like the LGBT community 
going to the preachers and saying, let us into Christianity. No. Christianity and religion specifically say something wrong with y'all. Now, whether it's right or wrong is immaterial. The holy book say something wrong with y'all. So why not go make your own book? The LGBT Bible. They make it, you know what? Ro- uh, rainbow colored muffins, you know, you know, just whatever it is. Make whatever miracle, whatever prophet, whatever. have a gay prophet. You know what's But so it's got to be your story. It can't be, it can't be, okay, we're going to make Jesus gay. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like they'll... Let's do our version of this. Right. No, create your own story and then follow that. See, what's important about what you're saying is people are hearing it at face value and think you just clowning. But in all actuality, it's 100 percent true in the sense of if God is really God and God really exists and is all seeing and all knowing and is love, the personification and the, the spirit form of God is love, then love is extended to everybody. So if you want to be involved in something, then it, it kind of doesn't equate that something doesn't accept you, but God is love. That makes no sense. So why wouldn't you turn around and start another movement that says God loves everybody, including us, and and make that then, a movement? But see, no, then the but rigid without, religious people come in and go, uh, there, but it doesn't right involve here them. in Leviticus says. I mean, but it also talks about adultery. It also talks about crime and sin and all of that. But all is forgiven once you get to the New Testament. Leviticus is old. Uh, mm. Come on now. Don't make me do that. Ooh. Go ahead. Ooh. Okay. Ooh, ah. <laughs> don't make me go there. Ooh. I just have a little question Mr. for the McGee, panel. Mr. McGee, don't make me angry. I, I, got, a, I got a question for the panel. <laughs> you wouldn't like So can we all agree, angry. panel, that <laughs> white people are never going to admit that they're black? Zoe said that we're all black. White people aren't going to ever admit that. No, Can we, yeah, they we, will. I don't know if they are going to. I Author, feel like white people are very stubborn, and they've proven that throughout history that they're not going to back down. Just like the dude in Star Wars was like, ha, nah, bruh. So here's <laughs> what I'm saying is, would black people, to end racism, would black people just say, okay, then we're all white? No, no, no. Would I black, see, I'm, I'm asking a I question. See, I, right, I see where I'm you're going. I'm just asking questions. I see where you're going. You know? Don't blame me. No, no, no. I I see where she's going. But two in racism, would black people be like, you know what? I'm a white dude now. No, let me let me go on. Let me flip it another way. Because I see I see what you're doing. Flippity Flippity dippity, dippity, you know. When I say when I say white people need to acknowledge that they're black, they're not going to say we're black. But what they will say is we're African, and they do say that. Okay. Author Richard Dawson. Right. The guy, uh, Richard Dawkins, I think that's how you pronounce his name. I got his book. He's the author of The God Delusion. Very intellectual atheist. Right. He has a shirt that says we are all African. So they acknowledge the fact that, okay, we all descended from, you know, this homo sapien 150, 200,000 years ago. We all came out of that. This is the part that that really makes racism bad. (sighs) Okay, we all came out of that. But when we came on the scene, we were the evolution of that, and thus we're better Mm -hmm. than the original. Right. Right? So that's, therein lies the problem. And then they'll say, well, you know what? Watch how they do this. There's a book out there. See, I, I reads. There's a book out there. You should get it. It's called Black Spark white fire and it talks about it's written by a white man richard poe i had him Mm -hmm. on my show before it's written by a white man he talks about how every european culture stole all of their knowledge and information from ancient egyptian sumerian and he said all of these egyptian sumerian mesopotamian persian they were all black Mm. all that's black this is a white man he said the information is there it's just that the historians are beholden to not tell the truth. They have to tell a narrative. The narrative is, you never say the victor wasn't the victor, right? <laughs> whoever, gets to, whoever wins the war gets to rewrite history. So again, white, black spark, white fire. Broke the whole situation down. But what white people do is, in this book it was so crazy. 
the sub-Saharan African. That one is worthy of, of slavery. Mm. The, the northern African, no, 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 he's white. Why? Because of Egypt. Egypt was so civilized and so advanced so long ago, they were like, uh-uh, we, mm-mm. We can't have them be called black or African or even associated with Africa in any way, shape, or form. He broke that down in the book, Black Spark, White Fire. Mm -hmm. And then he even broke it down to facial features. They said, well, you know what? Anybody with thin lips and a thin uh, aquiline nose, Caucasian. That gave them the right to claim Egyptians as Caucasian. That gave them the right to claim Iman, the model Iman, as Caucasian. Any black person with, with a straight nose and thin lips, Caucasian. But the sub-Saharan Negro, worthy of slavery. Do you see how they broke all of this down? Mm -hmm. It's the same faulty science that Hitler used. You know, if a person is a certain height and has a certain hair color and looks a certain way, he might be Aryan. Blue eyes, blonde hair, pure. Oh, there's an Aryan. Right? Well, wait a minute. A wider nose? Uh, he's a mutt. He's a racial mutt. They had their own, Hitler had their own racial propaganda bullshit going on too. Mm. We have to renounce all of that. And white people do too. So when I say white people have to claim that they're African, they have to claim that they are the children of the first human beings on planet Earth, which came out of Africa, which gave birth to everybody. It's because of white racism that you got people in China saying, well, you know what? The Peking man is the oldest man in the world. And you know what? Chinese evolved independently of all you motherfuckers. And we're older than everything. And civilization started here. You got Chinese scientists saying that. Up until they did the research on over 100 million people in China and they found out that everybody in China has that genetic marker that says, you motherfuckers right. are pygmy African. Mm. That's how right. you got them fat lips and them fat noses. You pygmy African. You didn't even know that, did you? Didn't even know. So shut your mouth, Peking man, and all that. You motherfuckers is our kids, too. Mm. Mm. White people got to acknowledge that. They got to just say, you know what? Shit, we created this shit. This is how we're in power. But will they give it up? I'm going to go with no. What you going with, Arana? Oh, I don't think so. You don't think they'll give it up? No. But I do have Do we have solutions. to take it? No, we don't have to take it. We don't have to take it. <sighs> Yay! No! We, yeah. We're not going to take it. Yeah. We can do oh. web conferences. Nice pivot. Listen, nice pivot. we can do web conferences and spread knowledge instead of uh, FaceTime and BS. Mm. Because the, 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 the thing that's great about technology is it instantly connects everyone. And you can, like, even Periscope, I love. Because anybody at any time of day, if they logged on or if they follow you, can see that, oh, so-and-so is online. So right now, I could go Periscope. Somebody in Germany right now can look and be like, what is Arana talking about over in L.A.? If we just Periscope knowledge to each other, we would all be more informed. Google sessions of identity. Interesting. We don't have to be ignorant. It's a choice. I like Ooh, that. Good, yeah. I like that. I like how y'all following in my rabbit hole right now. Yeah, we fell right in. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I can smoke a bag. Yeah, of that. I'm smoking that. My mm. thing is Hold this: up. I had to mm. like it's like a conversation I had with my sister about something that she didn't know, and I'm like, "But you have a smartphone." And she was going on and on. I'm like, but you have a smartphone. There is no reason for any person to own a smartphone and be dumb. It's an oxymoron. Why is your phone smarter than you? Like, wow. why? Wow. It doesn't even have to be that way. Learn something. Veronica, do you have a closing remark before we get to these yeah, callers? I, because because here's, the, here's the thing. So it depends on what... I agree with what you're saying, Arana. It depends on what you're using it for. I think black folks tend to use social media, social media for entertainment. And those that are using it for political objectives... I got an email from the guys that run Dream Defenders, and they were taking, and they're they're a major uh, activist group, and they were looking at you know social media and how addictive it is to think that if you're getting likes on social media, that 
that change is actually happening. And not to mention that all these social media platforms are being monitored and observed. So if you're out here and it's just for social understanding of all of this stuff and there's nothing threatening to the system, well, that's great. Because, you know, we tend to consume that stuff and use that stuff kind of like this entertainment. If you're talking about creating wholesale change and undermining a system that fundamentally monetizes your destruction, that's a whole different set of, that's a whole different game plan. Mm. It's a whole different set of game rules. And it ain't about having that shit on Twitter. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I love it, Veronica. I, I can smoke a bag of that, Whitney. <laughs> <ain't> about it. <laughs> I'm in agreement with everybody. Just more conversations. But my thing is with the conversation, how do you know what to believe in history since the people who took over and the evil weirdos rewrote it to be in their favor? How do you know what's the truth and what's not? You know what I hate? What you hate? Be on some old. Why don't you guys just get over it? Oh, gosh. When white people say, why don't you guys just get over it? That was, that was 200 years ago. Jesus. You want to bless them. It. But but then again, <laughs> they don't want us to get over 9-11. Nope, never they don't want us to get over the Holocaust. Never. Pearl Harbor. They don't want us to get over Pearl ain't Harbor. Like, ain't nothing like white tears. Ain't nothing like white tears and fragility <laughs> that could just drive you up a fucking wall, honestly. Oh, my God, I'm such a victim. There's nothing like white tears and white fragility to make me want to just put my hand through a wall. Are you kidding me? You know what's crazy? I, uh, callers. I, I digress. Ladies. I was going to say, I, I, got, I got my first solution based callers. on Veronica's thing. Wait, I, just, I can go after the collar. Just wait. I'm good. Hold on, Pam. <laughs> I got my first solution. Let's get Saul in here from Wisconsin. Yes. What's up with the cheese, man? What's happening? Hey, man, it's, it's incredible. Um, first off, I want to say this is an incredible uh, discussion. I appreciate the discussion. Um, but if you give me a couple of seconds, so I'm a, I work in, I'm a network engineer, right? Right. I'm one of like 90 people, and I'm the only black dude there. Well, ne- American-born Negro there, right? And the one thing mm-hmm. I learned, you know, with, with networking structure, it's, it goes into what Veronica was saying about demonizing an entire culture. So in networking, they have this thing that's called the 80-20 rule. Now, before the Internet, that meant 80% of the data in a network stayed within that network. The other 20% left the network. Nowadays, with the Internet, the 80-20 rule is a little bit different. 20% of the information stays mm-hmm. in that network. The other 80% leaves. The thing that I always argue to people all the time is that, and, and I'm not trying to be racist or anything, but it, it amazes me that people would be willing to go and shop at an Asian restaurant or go shop with the Asian nail salon. But if you turn around, when was the last time you actually saw an Asian person eating at a black restaurant, bringing that money back mm-hmm. to our community? Wow. We have a really bad habit. Every, every other community builds off of this 80-20 rule. They keep 80% of their money in their community. Mm-hmm. 20% leaves. We do the opposite. And I don't Correct. know if that's like us having a real real issue with wanting to assimilate in a society. Maybe that's where you get your M&Ms and Slim Jesus is from. I'm not sure. But we have this thing, and that, that's what Veronica was talking about, about sending money off. You demonize the woman, and then she goes and buys this fake hair from India. She goes and buys the, the, the Korean nails. You know, guys go buy the Jordans, and Michael Jordan even said, I made these for suburban white kids, not y'all. And it, 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 I don't know. It, 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 that's To me, that's the most difficult part about bringing all of this together is that you need to understand and have people and, and, and build up that understanding that even if you make – you know, a couple dollars a day, the buying power of legal African-Americans in this country is 1.1 trillion. If we were our own country, we'd be the 16th richest country in the world. How is it that we're all so impoverished? Or not necessarily all of us, but the, the, the majority of us are all so impoverished. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I, I don't understand that. And, and I'm pretty sure that at some point, if I start to make a change, I'm probably going to get shot. Because I'm not necessarily out here, you know, saying we need to do this, that, and the third. I want to do this thing quietly. I want to build up, you know, a, a, a group of network engineers. I want to build up record labels so, you know, Chief Keith finally gets out of Chicago and now he's in a, you know, a 360 deal and they're, willing, they're capable of taking away his house. Like, come on. You know, that's us buying back into that whole thing where we don't have the money to do it. We don't have the means to do it. You know, I, there's a guy that works for me. He's Egyptian. And he was like, I don't understand how 
you know, black people can just, they can buy, like, as soon as they get some money, the first thing they go is buying bling. And he told me about this situation he had with a guy, and he's 24-inch rims, and he asked the guy, are you comfortable with riding on rims like that? Guy pulls out a wad full of money. It had to be about 10 racks. He was like, I have nothing else to do with this. How do you have nothing else to do with wow. this? I'm legal. I work, I work every day, but I can guarantee you, if you gave me 10,000 racks, or you gave me 10 racks illegally, I can turn that to some legal money because I'm not, I'm, you know, I have a plan. You know, so it's like, how do you get to a point where you 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 remove that victimization mm -hmm. from most of our people? It's generations of it. It's a generational thing, right? It's it's you know, I yep. I, I, I said it in a rap. I was like, perspective. Without it, what are we left with? A cycle of madness. The generations seem to take to their caskets, and it's like, how do you fix that? You know, is, is, is it do you do it do do you do it through the schools? Do you you know do you allow the ones that are already lost to be lost and try to save the ones? that you can save, I don't really know, but I feel like that's the discussion that needs to be had. And, it, and, you know, the whole thing about, like, ending systematic racism, it comes with the economy, right? And coming with the economy, that's where your respect comes. That 20% that's leaving your network, your community, people will respect that money if there is something that comes behind it. You have power when you have buying power, a unified buying power, you know? And I don't know if anyone, you know, The Departed was a great movie. But the the, 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 the the monologue at the beginning of the movie where Jack Nicholson was talking about how what the Irish had to do to to, you know, to to come up in this world when, or in this country when they came over. And that's when, you know, when he ended, it, he was like, that's the thing the niggas don't understand. I got no problem with my black chappies, but what they need to understand is no one gives you respect. You have to take it. You know, and it's not necessarily taking it by force, you know. Well, actually, if you want to call it that, like, you don't have to run out and, you know, spray up a place and say black power. That's that's not by force. You can actually take your money, build up your community and say, no, you have no right to be in this community. You have no right to shop with us or get any money with us unless you abide by our demands and people who will begin to respect you. You know, I mean, I mean, it's not very many black people in Wisconsin and everybody that's in Wisconsin that I've met that is black, they, they have some, they're impoverished. But I've run across situations where people had absolutely no belief in me. And that's that social Darwinism thing. Mm. You're, you're a black male. OK, you may be an engineer, but you're the only black engineer on this team. This must have been from from equal opportunity. And then when they see what I can do in comparison to everybody else, they're like, holy shit. I thought that I thought that, you know, I this, thought your job was a shit. Things that you totally, exactly. Right. And, but wow. At this point now, I need to have more of you on my team. Why am I paying these people? And they have this sense of entitlement because they feel like they're the evolved species. Mm. We all are the ones that are really getting down. Mm. But it wow. takes it takes people. It takes people like me. It takes people like y'all to really get out there and make those changes. It's kind of like an Uncle Tom thing. Like everybody says this and the third about Uncle Tom. But, you know, somebody had to trick the white man to let us through. What did, what did, what did Chris Rock say? Nigga, who taught you octagon? Somebody had to teach me octagon. Mm. Somebody had to play Uncle Tom to learn octagon. So somebody has to make a way. So it's mostly on those people to make a way and then find out how to get those lost souls and bring them back. Mm. You know, wow. let's flip that 80 20 rule. Anybody that wants to look in the network and look up the 80 20 rule and apply that, uh, apply it to the economics of the black community, yeah. you'll be amazed. Man, That's dope. let me just say, at. man, hey, you took the show to another level. Right, really Wisconsin. appreciate you, Saul. And that's. And that's what I and that's what I sent you on the on the Facebook I mean on the Twitter and that's why I said I wanted to get in because what y'all are talking about hits on everything that I work on every day. Now they got four black engineers coming in and they probably gonna hire some more. And my goal is to train as many as I possibly can. Wow, that's thank you, up. brother. That's a solution. Let's, let's, appreciate you, man. Like let's get some money. Right. Thanks, yeah. man. Thanks, man. I appreciate you Call in anytime. Phone lines is cracking. The number to dial is 844-55-1. You're listening to The Voice of Reason on Hot Button Radio. Let me just say, man, this is part three of our racism series. It started last Monday, Wednesday, and now today is Solution Day. We want to know, how do we get out of it? How do we get out of it? The racial morass, that uh, the, the racial quagmire that we find ourselves drowning in. Is Quagmire a real word? Yes, yeah. it is. He's not just a character yes, on Family is. Guy. No, it's I a love, real word. And I was an honor student. Ain't that sad? <laughs> Jesus. What's Quagmire mean? <laughs> it's like a... It's a trap. Okay. It's like yeah. a mess. 
It's a trap. It's a trap. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, this is like messed quagmire up. Quagmire is a like trap. Like a car accident. That is a quagmire right stuck, there. When you're stuck in a quagmire. Yeah. Mm. 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 I hate a freaking a one on the show. Quagmire, like a conundrum even. Mm. It's a mess. Mm-hmm. Bruh. It's a predicament. It's a predicament. Okay. I have a new understanding. Thank you, folks. Uh, every time I get some, she go, boy, that's a predicament. Oh. Yes, it is. Oh, bo- oh <laughs> my God. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> 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 Ain't even nothing left to do. Boom. That was a quagmire right there. Let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Cover up your quagmires, girls. <laughs> Ew. So listen, I'm back. Back on my joint right now. We got callers. I want to go to L.A. Line six. Moki from L.A.? You know who this is. You already know they can't get my name. Nikkei, man. Oh, Nikkei. This hey. boy that wrote Moki. I like that, too. That's cute. cute. <laughs> He's from New York. They just give him a break. He's from New York. He don't know. Nikkei, it's what up, boot thing? What's happening? Hey, y'all. Good evening. Good evening. What's up? Good evening. Okay, let's see. You know, I like to break down everything down to the lowest common denominator. Word. You know, first of all, you always have to know the rules of engagement. Do you understand what I'm saying? And why they may lie in history class and they may be boring, but if you're paying attention, you're going to learn something. Black people collectively need to understand that you must pay a price for liberation and they need to ask themselves, what are you willing to pay? Why you talk about white folks? When white folks left England, they came over here and they shed blood and they had money to pay for their freedom. Ask the Haitians why they are now eating mud pies because they shed blood for their freedom and they're paying the French to death for their freedom. Mm -hmm. So freedom and liberation don't come without shedding no blood and having no money. Mm. You can't that is be real broke. as hell, Nikkei. Exactly. You can't be broke exactly. and have your total blood supply intact exactly. and expect change. I love it. Nikkei in the building brought LA into exactly. the house. Damn. That was that was it right there. Jeez. It's true. Please. Come on now. Wow. Is that what it is right now? Is that what's happening? Mm. Yeah. What's up? Hey, I appreciate you, Nikkei. Always. Let's see. I mean, we still got callers. Let me get one more in here. Should I just go with it? Right? I'm going to go with it right now. Hustle. Oh, no. here we go. From Miami. Line three. Come on in here, Hustle. Hustle. We you got know, the door open. We, we got to set it up for you, pimp. Let's get Hustle in here, man. No doubt, man. Every day I'm Jolly hustling. Ranchers. Every day I'm Penny hustling. Candy. Every day I'm Zoe hustling. Hat. Every day I'm Mitchell Bass. Every day I'm Doritos. Every day I'm and Freedom. Every day I'm Phantoms. Every day I'm Bright. Every day I'm Squirts. Every day I'm iPhones. Toenail Clippers. Yeah. Aquafina. Arrowhead. For you bougie people, I can feed you. Sure. Yeah, hustle. Hey. What up, my brother? We know we had to bring you in here, right? Hey, we had hustle. to bring you in here, right? You know that. What's up, What's man? Up? The beautiful Rana, Whitney, <laughs> and of course Veronica. What's up? Hello. Hey, hey. hey. So look, I wrote something down for the show, man, because you know I found this one of the most important topics facing people today, and I call this here the glitch. All right, so I'm going to break it down for y'all. Imagine a football team running the same play over and over again, right? Pretty soon they're going to be dominant. And I see that as how our communities operate. We keep running the same defensive scheme over and over again, Mm -hmm. expecting the opposition Mm -hmm. to give us the ball. Mm -hmm. You see, we need to change things up, run a few blitzes maybe, because the fear of the blitz can be just as powerful as the blitz itself. Wow. You understand what I'm mm. No, 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 no. Say that. Come on, man. Say that. Damn. That's that good weed right there. Damn. <laughs> the fear of the blitz. Listen, that's what the nuclear mm-hmm. weapon is. Come on now, man. It's a Listen. deterrent. It's saying, don't make me have to do don't this. Don't make me push the button. Yeah. And then another country gets it, and it said, well, I have it too. 
don't make us fuck up the whole world, because we will, but it's a deterrent. They're not really going to do it. No. They're not going to do it. It's a deterrent. But the fear that I could do it prevents a lot of shit from happening. Fear is stronger than love. Pac Mm -hmm. told us that. Well, that's not true. Pac was wrong. I'll smack Pac right now. Fear is stronger than love. No, it is not. Not even close. Love is stronger than fear, but when someone is afraid, it paralyzes everything. Yeah. Hey, I was telling Zoda the other day, I just think that fear is more influential in the world. I don't think it's more powerful than love. Mm. Nothing's more powerful than love. Let's be clear. Right. Mm. However, a person in fear... It, we go, it goes back to that learned helplessness and the demonization and the victimization and all of those things that we were talking about earlier. When a person is in fear, they become paralyzed. They become inactive. They become complacent. They become scared. And whoever is unafraid is the person with the advantage. I can smoke a bag okay. of that. That's all I'm saying. Hustle, you always come in here, man, and bring heat. Hey, much respect. Man. We appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Embrace the day, man. Yes, yes, sir. Y'all embrace the day. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Hustle. Mm. So Hustle's gone, but man, he dropped science. That's, that was hot. Mm-hmm. That was hot monkey grease right there. You know, I love monkey grease, Veronica. Let me give you this, though. Just like black people need to renounce victimhood, right? white people have to acknowledge, let's just look at this, that they're kind of intoxicated on the power that comes from the racist white supremacist infrastructure that they have in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just like an alcoholic got to stand up and say, I have a problem. White people got to stand up and say, I got Mm -hmm. a problem. We have a problem. The problem of thinking we're better, the problem of thinking we're superior. And, And you say, well, white people don't think that way today. Right? Because a lot of white people don't understand that this system is on autopilot. When you look at how much money the average white household has versus the bread that the average black household has, is it because black people are just terrible with money? Right? When you go into neighborhoods like Santa Monica, you go into neighborhoods like Palisades and, you know, Rolling Heights and things of that nature. You go over there. Why is it that the average white family, nuclear family, has more money? Is it because they're just better money managers? When we start talking about the opportunities that are afforded by default, listen to Donald Trump. You know, uh, I had to fight for everything, you know. My dad, you know, he gave me a very small loan of a million. Huh? Just by default, Pops had a million for you to start your shit? A small loan. But just, I can't a, even get half on a ticket a, to Chicago. Right, it was a very <laughs> meager, modest loan of a million dollars. What? Okay. I'm paying for my ticket. What but, you gonna do? But do you understand, like, in his mind... Right. Can I, do, you, right. do you follow what I'm saying? Like, racism will never end until people like that go, yeah, I'm privileged. The mm. system benefits me by default this is one of the main reasons why my homeboy cool mo d a few years ago wrote a book called there's a god on the mic cool mo d ranks the 50 greatest mcs of all time guess who wasn't in the book eminem you know why eminem wasn't in the book it's not that mo d doesn't think he's one of the greatest mcs of all time it's not that mo d doesn't think the dude isn't talented you know why he isn't in the book because he white. Because he got his style from. It's not just because he's white. No, because he got his style from Modi Rakim. No, and, no, no, no. Why? Modi said, "I can't quantify his platform. He has a platform by default. Already, a dope white MC is a star by off default. Top. Yeah. Off top, mm-hmm. that's true. Uh, that's true. That's, that's he said, deep. "I can't." I can't. I, Azalea. She wasn't right. even talented. Just by by default. If she was really cold, that bitch be gone by now. So by default, I can't put him in the in the book. Not that's and Mo was and Mo was fucked up over it because he was like, that motherfucker is dope as hell. Mm. But by default, 
by default, he's going to rock it to the top. Mm-hmm. Think to about it. Style. Who's the number one selling hip hop artist of all time? Eminem. Mm. Period. Out of everybody. Jay Z, mm. sit down. Tupac, sit down. Everybody, it's Eminem by default. So he said, I can't quantify the platform he comes into our culture with. So he was like, if I write the book, I just, if I got to put him in, so fuck it, he's number one by default. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean he isn't talented. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So white people have to mm-hmm. kind of stand up and go, wow, by default, I'm good. You got black moms and fathers or single mothers trying to lie. So they lie about their address so they can get their kid into that school where y'all go. Right. Because the overall grade and the API or whatever it is, the APR, whatever that school is that says this is what their SAT scores are. And those are the co- the, the colleges look at those grades differently than they look at the grades. For instance, Santa Monica High School oh, yeah. versus Inglewood oh, yeah. High. Mm hmm. You can have a fucking 4.0 at Englewood and still not get into Harvard. But Sean Penn went to Santa Monica. You go to Santa Monica High and come out of there with a 4.0. You got Brown. You got Dartmouth. You got Harvard. You got Columbia. The first person to recruit my son, he was at Santa Monica High School in the 10th grade. First school to come recruit him. You know what it was? Columbia. Mm. Let's not... If he was at Inglewood, it would have uh-huh. been Howard. It would have been Negro State. Morris Brown. Right. But Hampton. do you see what I'm saying? Until white people stand up and go, wow, we do got it. Set up. It's ours. It's our system. And it favors us. Mm-hmm. Racism will always be here. Phone lines, I'm going to come to you. Get to your, get to them now. I got some, we got some callers on, but I want more. 844-55-1. That's the number to dial. 844-55-1. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, callers, callers, callers all the way through. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> part three of the end of racism. Now, my homeboy, Jeff Schimmel, you know. He asked me to do this series because he's seriously concerned about race. He's like, man, you know, and Jeff is a smart guy. I mean, he's a good guy. He may not know everything, but he's a good guy. His heart is good. So Jeff is like, look, man, I don't think it's ever going to end because people are just so locked into their belief systems. Right. I mean, look at America right now. When we talk about, say, 9-11, right? Americans believe, all right, listen, we have freedoms. We're free. Our country, our society is better than everybody else's because we have democracy. What about democracy, Anakin? Anyway, we have democracy, right? (laughs) We're free, right? So with that, in order to get those beliefs out of our mind, because a belief is really difficult It's something really difficult to uproot out of somebody's mind. I I mention this a lot when I talk about transactional psychology, right? Some people have loser scripts playing in their mind where they have this self-defeating internal script that's going over and over. You ain't shit. You can't make it. You're not good. You won't do it. You ain't going to do it. You're not going to do it, right? Or then you have a winner script, which is saying there is a... My son has one of the craziest winner scripts in the world, and it's scary, you know, he'll be hurt. Dad, I'm just going to put on a, a fucking brace and I'm going to get out there and I'm going to... No, 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 you're not. You're going to sit down and we're going to fucking strap you to the bed so you can't get out there. Because he's the type of dude that'll hurt himself even worse because he doesn't think he's hurt. Right? He's just, I can do anything, Dad. It's just, <laughs> it's anything. Anything. any. No, nigga. Sit down. Right? But I say all of that to say, in order for them to uproot you know, these long-held beliefs, they got to do shit that scares us, that frightens us. Somebody figured out that fear is the easiest way to get you to detach from a particular belief. So look at the climate. 9-11 made everybody scared. Mm -hmm. Made everybody scared. Scared enough to give give up civil liberties. Social engineering is some slick shit. Right? 
Because it's like, I know I can't talk you into giving up this belief. I got to scare you into doing it. Or seduce you. Or seduce. Putting our locations and everything we do on social media all the time. That's true. Seduction. I can smoke a bag of that. I'm just saying, how do we scare the shit out of the white supremacist infrastructure? What is our 9-11 to that to make them go, you know what, shit, racism isn't worth it anymore? Whitney? Maybe. This is just a thought, guys. Here we go. Here we go. You know, I'm going there. What if, because blacks are all, what, what, what are we doing, entertainment and sports? What if we stop entertaining them? Would that work? What do you all think? It would take some money That's away. That's smart. You feel me? It like, it's going to take a lot away. of money away, which is really the power, which we've been talking about. But I feel like if we were like, you know what? Nah, we're not doing it. From college athletes to the top of the top. See, but the only thing about that is to withdraw from that mm -hmm. means when you withdraw, you withdraw. So there has to be a system or something in place, you know, well, I, well, after that. Okay, well, go over, please Where believe we, we can go overseas and play ball, too, because they would love to do all that over there, too. So if, if it's the fear of not having money No, it's not. Whatever, it's just that, having organization. Because once you, like we, we, we were talking about Haiti earlier, once you get out of it, you got to get out of it. It's like no. the skulls. No, no, Whitney is on to something. Right. Whitney, she didn't say this, but I'm going to recontextualize it for her. Mm -hmm. You better get on down, though. Contextual, sir. She is saying, we got to get over the mama I made it syndrome. Mm -hmm. pa participation in a system. Is it okay? You, oh. you see what I'm saying? Yep. Mama I made it. The mama I made it concept. Shout out to Jay-Z. Happy birthday. birthday. You feel me? We got to get... That's his song, Mama I Made It. Be remember, Fight the Power? Yep. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, no, excuse me. Do the Right Thing, the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When the guy is in the, the pizza shop and they're sitting next to these pictures of all of these people on the wall mm -hmm. and he goes, but Prince is not black. Michael Jackson is not black. I mean, they're, they're famous. They're, they're immortal. They're that's immortal. their system. And in order for us to reach that level in their minds... We have to be great in that way. But we're still part of that system. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. there has to be a renunciation of it all. But whenever we do that, tell me, we're not challenged. We're impeded. Bill Cosby, I want NBC. No, you don't, nigga. Well, I got the bread. I got $600 million to buy NBC. Nigga, pfft. we're not selling it to you. How about it? Mm. Right? No. No, that's what happened. They turned them down. Do you understand what I'm yeah. saying? So my Who's trying to do it in the 90s? Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We have to... Can you imagine what the NBA would look like if we had our own league? We. And when I say we, all the black ball players, and I'm talking about all over the world. Yeah. South America, you know, the, the, uh, the Barbosas of the world. Hilarious. The Diaws of the world. All them, all people of color. Color, so now we're gonna play together. What would the NBA next a bunch of Steve Nash's running around this bitch? Actually, I love Steve Nash though. Well, you know what's interesting about that? It's the conversation. See, that's why we're in trouble. Whitney. No, he a good Whitney. point guard. You Whitney see his let him into the black league. No, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Steve Damn it. Nash has passes like crazy. She left the door open. Come on. Damn it, Whitney. Close the door. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you know what's funny about that? Chris Rock did a whole like expose on um Real Sports, HBO, talking about how baseball isn't as lucrative as it used to be. It's lucrative for the players because they got the biggest salaries. But as far as, like, black fanship, baseball has almost completely lost its black fans. Right. And, and players. And yeah. players. And Chris Rock was talking about why. And, he was, and basically, he's like, it's just not cool anymore. It's not he's like, cool. you watch baseball, and it's all of this holding on to the good old America. Back when you <laughs> to beat us and shit. We don't want to watch that. Nah. We don't want to sing these good old American songs. And then you sit there and you have to watch the game. There is no, you know, grandstands or ooh, somebody dunked and blah, blah, blah. It's not entertaining and it's not cool and black is cool. Well, we have a whole full line of callers. Let's right. get them. I see that. Tristan from Detroit, line four. 
Tristan. Look, you paying attention? Tristan. Are you paying attention? No. Our engineer, he ain't paying attention. Line four, Tristan. He didn't, he was, he's just giggling and and texting. He was checking his Instagram. Tristan, we'd like to speak to you. Yes. Hi. Hello. Hey, how you doing? You're here, brother. Speak on it, man. What are your solutions? Solutions, solutions, solutions. What are they? I got my solution first. All right. My solution is, uh, first thing we have to do, we would have to get uh, white people and black people alike the least bit interested in this conversation that we have it. And the second thing we have to do, we have to get rid of, we would have to uh, teach our teach our kids and um, uh, just go from there. You know what I'm saying? Um, I would also like to touch on what you said earlier as far as uh, the, the the black uh, pastors not meeting with Louis Farrakhan. Um, I like to dispel that myth. Um, and everywhere that... Uh, the minister went, he had to uh, speak at a church where well, he spoke at a church, you know, and it was nine times 10 a Baptist church. So he had to speak to them in order to get to that, in order to get to the church. Mm. 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 So I, I just think that's, that's just propaganda, you know? Wow. All I can say is brother, you elevated the show by calling. That information right, just took it, it to another level, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Call me anytime. 844-55-1, the voice of reason is live and active. Awesome. We need solutions to the race problem in America. Thanks, Tristan. Is it ever going to end? I don't know. I don't know. Let's go to Alasia from Trenton, New Jersey, line three. Nice. Alasia. What's up, Alasia? It's a cute name. I like that name, Alasia. Alasia. What's happening, Alasia? <laughs> Alasia, where is you? Where? No. Alasia, we about to lose Alasia. Deuces. All right. Let's go to Texas. Line six. Brandon, Yeehaw. you're on the voice of reason. Holler at us. Hey there, cowboy. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> How art thou? Yeah. Okay, so we're looking for <laughs> solutions towards racism. Yep. And if you ask me, racism in America at least stems from class, class imbalance, class inequality, you know, slavery and just deeply rooted issues like that. And what I think that comes from, that's also just pretty much a subset of, like, a whole symptom of capitalism. You know, capitalism pretty much stems from, in my opinion, capitalizing off of somebody else's labor to for a small few to, you know, take the game. And nowadays, what we're seeing is more and more, there's a, there's a small percentage of people that are getting more and more money, and less of us have any say in our lives and what goes on. And that's slavery right there. You know, we we don't we don't really realize it, but you know, if you don't have enough money, you can't eat. You know, let's say organic food. You can't shop at certain places. You know, just being poor actually limits you know your life expectancy. That's slavery, and everybody's suffering from it today. Now, I, I mean, I think solution wise, what we can do is you know we just got to come up with a different system that works for everybody. Because right now, capitalism is so exploitative. And it makes people compete against each other. They look, they look for anything to just have any disagreement with, any differences in opinion, like skin color, race, you know, whoever makes more money. You know, it doesn't matter. Like, everybody is competing against each other. And they lose, they lose all sense of, like, what's right and wrong. They don't care. They don't care for their, their fellow man or not, whatnot. You know, right now we're all acting in fear, which we need to be acting in love. You know, we said that earlier. Amen to that. I can see and, you know, that's just, that's just my opinion on this. Hey, man, I appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much for the call. We got to keep it pushing. I'm calling. I need solutions. He's 100% correct. Callers, I need solutions. Help us, man. We know yeah. we know. We got to recycle the black dollar. Somebody did a report. I just saw it. I didn't get a chance to read the whole thing, but m- one part of it said that the black dollar stays in the black community for six hours. Ding! And then it's out. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And then that's it's ghost. Right. It's in our community only six hours. That's not even a whole day of work. And then boom, it's out of it's out of there. Dang, so socio right. you know, economics. We got side so- chicks that stay in the black community longer than that. <laughs> God damn. We got side chicks in the family longer than that. You know what I'm saying? You know you a side chick. This is one of them off holidays. Man, listen. <laughs> wow. See, my brother got the same side chick for six Thanksgivings. Listen. Uh, uh, next- <laughs> hey, girl. Um- <laughs> That's good. 
That's a good run. Let's go to Georgia. <laughs> line one. We got Jonathan from Georgia. Line one. Holler at us, Jonathan. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Hi, oh, there. what's happening, man? Hey, hey. okay. Uh, um, I think that racism, firstly, uh, when lions become, can coexist with hyenas, I think that's when racism would end. Secondly, mm. I love the I love the conversation. You know, we have to have this racism talk and uh, this is a supremacy talk because there's a lot of us, like though you said on one of your shows about the testicles resting comfortably on the shoulders of uh, of, of, of this infrastructure of white people's. You know, mm-hmm. you want to assimilate into into that. You have to like like Mama, I made the thing you just said. You know, the conversation is is necessary. But here's what we've been doing about the racism conversation. I, I call it, it was like you was in my mind, I call it a cancer myself. It's cancerous. And what we've done is made the initial visit to the physician, and he's diagnosed us with this cancer, and he's also said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do X, Y, Z, chemotherapy. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Now come back and see me next week. Now we've done this for a 1,000 weeks. But we haven't began the treatment. We're still talking about it. We're still going to the same position, same conversation, but we haven't started the treatments to eradicate the cancer. So that cancer is still there doing its thing. And what I'm saying is I don't feel like even petitioning or appealing to that Neanderthal race of being is healthy. At all. We, we, we should not even include them in a thought because they are not human. They are incapable of being genuinely compassionate for a dark-skinned child. If you would do mm. a child harm, you ain't shit. Word. And for the, for, for, the, for the anti-abortionist people who are not pro-choice, you're catching some black mothers to keep a child that you're only going to discriminate against once they get old or once they get here. But you don't want them to, I, I'm not for abortion at all, but, but you, you, you claim that you are against it. But as soon as that child gets in, he's a dark one, he's going to be oppressed by you. Wow. Hey, Jonathan, a.k.a. I'm going to say this. A.k.a. Slurp Daddy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We, we appreciate the call, brother. We, you. we know you. We got you, man. We know you, hey, I, I, Maurice. You know, people love Slurp daddy. You, so I, I just wanted to be incognito, man. You I can't tried. be incognito. We yeah. know you, you man. You can't even be incognito. Not even incognito, y'all. You call Don't himself do Jonathan. Do you boys stop? <laughs> I just kept quiet the whole time. Can I, can, I, can I say one more thing? Yeah. Quickly. We we The issue, the real issue about all of this it's us. We are our nemesis. Right. We are our worst enemy. Let's let's take away supremacy and racism. Look at how many holes, Hello, holes. that are there in our path that we have the possibility of falling in and breaking our necks. See, he What's said holes with an L. Holes. Oh, I thought he was talking about some hoes, man. See? Hmm? See? <laughs> she, she thought you were talking about hoes, John. I'm just saying. His, no, this ain't Jonathan. This is I'ma say this. I know. This is the homeboy. That's his real name, though. No, his, Jay, his, his name, name is Maurice. Jay. His name is <laughs> Sir Daddy. Hey man, we appreciate you, man. Don't ever try to sneak in here like that don't again. You sneak up on us. I know. You that, family. You I know don't have to sneak this, in. This I'ma say. I'ma say this, AKA. But she thought you said Holmes. Yes, you family, brother. We we got to run. We got so many callers, man. But thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, so look, I got to go. Wait, 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 wait. I got to get this other caller in. Let's get D-Nice on the line from Chicago, line four. All right. What's up, studio? D-Nice, Who's you know we got to bring you in right. Veronica. Hard. Veronica. Yes, sir. Your, your, your yes. headphone is, is struggling right now. Sorry. Yeah, it's all right, baby. Sorry. Let's get D-Nice in here. My name is D-Nice. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Uh, it's Friday, y'all, and we in the building. Hey, the nice is in the building. Yo. Hey, hey. <laughs> we got to bring you in right, okay, man. What's I'm up, D-Nice? 
Yo, what's up, studio? Hey, let me touch on uh, something that Whitney Ooh. spoke about a few minutes ago, and that's the black athletes. See, we had a perfect opportunity to be able to make an example of these motherfuckers when the Clippers went through all that bullshit a couple years ago. There you go. And when them pussy-ass niggas mm-hmm. got up there and took shirts off instead of boycotting the motherfucking game, exactly. making a point to these motherfuckers, that's when they should have started this fucking revolution. See? I'm sick of these motherfuckers, man. These bitch-ass athletes watching TV with these motherfuckers every Christmas. They talking about they thanking their mama and doing this and doing that. But... They come from nothing, but these motherfuckers want to grow up to be billionaires and neglect the community that they came from. Mm-hmm. All the coaches that helped them along the way in AAU, all the, the, the mentors that they leaned on when they didn't have shoes to play basketball with. And these motherfuckers are the virus that constantly permeates throughout our community mm. when you have kids who grow up to look at these motherfuckers. See? And another thing. When these players understand their power, whether it's from college football, college basketball, to band together, like Missouri did when they got that fucking uh, bullshit AD up out of there, that's the type of revolution we need. When you start off doing shit like that and hurting these universities and these teams that they rely on that dollar for, that's when they're going to start paying attention to what the fuck we saying. Marching ain't going to do shit. No, nope. I live in Chicago. All them bitch-ass motherfuckers was downtown on Michigan Avenue for Black Friday fighting each other, fighting the protesters to get in those stores to spend money to help out fucking white America. That's not the example we need to be setting. They needed to be banded together with those motherfuckers who was down there protesting for that young man who lost his life. Mm. That's all I got to say, y'all. Wow, have a good, good looking, man. There it is. Appreciate Thank it. You. That was nice. <laughs> Let's go to line one. The guy who started this whole fight has joined the conversation. Really? The guy who started all of this, who said, Zoe, Yay. you should do, do this. a whole series on racism. Jeff. Jeff. Jeff, what up, Jeff? Jeff Schimmel Jeff. has joined Yo. the oh. conversation. <laughs> what up, Jeff? Yes. Hey, Jeff. Yo, what's happening? Can you hear me okay? Yes, we, we got you. you. Fine. All right, you know what? I'm gonna try, I'm gonna put it on my actual phone here instead of this call. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. We got you, Jeff. All right. Well, first of all, hi everybody. Hello, Jeff. <laughs> what How up, Jeff? Are thou? <laughs> um, I'm way out of town right now, but I wanted to call in before the end of the show. First of all, Zoe, you know you have my respect for years and years. And I just wanted to thank you for taking this idea seriously and for and for keeping the show going all week. Um, I was a little bit disheartened today. I, I don't know if you've been talking about the article I sent you at all. No, um, no, no, not yet. About the whiz. But, you know, it was in the news today that, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people know that there was a live NBC performance of the whiz on TV. Mm-hmm. Yesterday. And yesterday and a lot of people i was surprised you know what i was halfway surprised to hear that a lot of tweets went out and a lot of complaints went out to nbc because people said this is racist how come it's an all black cast and i gotta say you know the whiz being a reimagining originally you know on on the stage in new york and then you know, the movie with Michael Jackson and Diana Ross, Mm -hmm. that was purposely, purposely created as the black version of the Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be, hey, you know what, this is a straight, you know, verbatim remake. This was a reimagining where they said, let's do this, this way. For, for, but for somebody in 2015, to use what I feel is a really lame race card and write in to NBC and tweet that that is an example of racism, basically reverse discrimination. Why are there no white people in the cast? Because this is the black production of The Wiz, you idiot. <laughs> right. You know? Exactly. But, but, but the reason it bothered me is that 
A, people don't do their homework in general before they complain about stuff like that. The other reason it bothered me is because I could see where people would say, okay, so we're going to do a remake of The Wizard of Oz, but the original Wizard of Oz had no black people in it. So we're not going to put any people of color in a remake of The Wizard of Oz. Mm. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because you know there would be complaints about that. Mm. Right, right. So, so this being Friday, your third show in a row about trying to cure racism, there's 18 minutes left to cure it. (laughs) Right. I'm I'm just a little bit sad that as recently as today, people are making crazy accusations, crazy assumptions about what's in other people's minds. And I'd, but but on the other hand, I know that you've done good this week. I know that you've done some good because, like you and I have talked off the air, and some of the points that your your guests made during the week actually really resonated with me. They stuck with me. Mm-hmm. So I hope that that's multiplied many, many, many times over because you have to have the uncomfortable conversations sometimes to 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 reach a common ground. Mm-hmm. Jeff Schimmel. There it is. Man. That's so, yeah, so give it up for Jeff. Today? Give it up for Jeff, give man. Come on. Hallelujah. We got your music playing in the background, too. Is this Patches? What is this? <laughs> this is Bloodstone? Yeah, we got Bloodstone playing for you, Jeff, in the background. Don't, don't, don't play Patches, please. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, we appreciate but, it, Jeff. Thanks, man. All right, man. So uh, have a good uh, rest of the show. Maybe you can pull off a miracle in the next 17 minutes. I'm going to try. But um, thank you so much for doing this. You know, it's uh, it's not easy, but it's valuable. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you next week. All, All right, right, brother. Jeff. Holla at you, man. All right. Man, you see? We're changing lives, bro. See that? We changed our engineer's life. What's your name, boy? Tell him your name. Get on the microphone. Talk about your experience, brother. You Get on the microphone. What, you didn't witness when you three heard the shows? first episode of the race show, what what happened with you? Well, honestly, I'm from New York, and we're more open with race in New York than out here. Out here, everything's kind of swept under the rug. So it's nice seeing uh, that being talked about out here. But um, yeah, I've plenty of black friends from home, plenty of white friends, plenty of yellow, purple, green, you know, we don't really care from home. If you're an asshole, you're an asshole. And it's, <laughs> it's nice to know, like people care about this. Cause you see like the news and stuff like that. And people are just like out of their fucking minds. You're yeah. just like, what is going on with these people? It's crazy. Right. I think they were saying, listen, shows on NBC must be white, like friends, like mm. Seinfeld. Yeah. This is a white network. And unless we sanction a Cosby show, we should not have a live stage play of The Wizard of Oz. Keep that shit on BET. Mm. 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 And this should be talked about. Like, this should be talked about way more. It's and the I, I, and, and real talk, that's so interesting because, once again, like the point we brought up earlier with Chris Rock joke and being a, a top high-level comedian, his next-door neighbor is a dentist, you had Queen Latifah, Mary J. Blige, the, the bad chick from Orange is the New Black, like heavy star power and money put into it. I saw but it. See, it was I'm, well done. But, but see, I'm going to go the other way. Okay, get I'm on gonna that. I'm going to go the other way. Stop doing the black and reimagination and interpretation of shit. Just do Everybody create something else. Yeah, I'm not mad like, at that. I don't want to see a black Superman. I don't create either. your own superhero. Meteor Man, black. No, not Meteor <laughs> Man. <laughs> Meteor Man was cold though. They but had no, the no, golden no. But, dragons. But do you understand? It's the same philosophy that I said about the 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 LGBT community. Right. Yep. I'm saying Christianity by design doesn't want you by design. Whoever wrote it, it could have been man, it could have been God. I don't know who wrote it. But whoever wrote the book called the Bible, they don't fuck with y'all. <laughs> so write your own spirit book. There it is. Whatever. The first gay prophet came to, you know, some Sharky's club or something San on a Francisco. motorcycle What's... with some patent leather on See, and he had wings. Don't have to make it folklore and fairy tales. But I'm just but saying. They but they should I'm just not saying, subscribe what, to that. But, but what I'm saying that. is create your own narrative. Yeah. So although Jeff is right 100%, it just illustrates some more racism in our community, white people. They're basically saying, hey, what the fuck? This is NBC. 
This is prime time. Why is this coonish shit on here? This is some centric TV one, you know, bounce. bounce. This ain't this ain't NBC. Right. And that's what they're saying. And they did the same thing for the Star Wars movie. Oh, shit. It's a black Jedi. What? <laughs> OK, we've had enough. We only we, we, we had once. We had uh, Billy D. Williams. Lando Calrissian, that nigga was cool. Right? That's, that, 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 that nigga was cool. That's enough for him. Then we have Mace Windu. Oh, it's good. He got killed. Great. Yeah, that means Samuel no L. Jackson. Niggas. No more niggas. Oh, Jesus. Another nigga in space? Uh, uh, yes, we, we're in space, too. We can too. do that. We can do that, too. They don't like it. This. That's true. That's the craziest part about it. Yeah. Like, the white community really... I'm Sicilian. I'm, a, I'm considered a white person. In the eyes of everybody, it's Let's actually check the blood. insane. Mm. Yeah, check, Let's the, check the blood. You, oh, I already know, but I'm just saying. You don't think I'm a brother? Then check my chromosome. <laughs> How has this show helped you, or what I, have we touched on that really? Spoke he got a to black you? girl honestly, for now, man. Look, you honestly, can tell. I've always, I've always known all of this. Honestly, I've always known you get into a car with three black kids, four, four people in a car, you're getting pulled over automatically. It's not even a question. I've yeah. already know that. You get out, you get searched. It's not. It's. And you gonna hold the weed for me or no? I no, I usually eat it. I usually just eat it. <laughs> you just hold my weed real quick. And then, and then we laugh about one. Me. And then we laugh while they search the car. I would put all the drugs in t- on the white guy. I'm sorry. That's nah, what we you got to eat it because whoever you're going to be fine. No, 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 no. Because you're with the black guy, so they're gonna say you, this is what you get. Yeah, this is what you for get. Hanging exactly. out with these. you want. You want to be black? We're gonna treat you like you're black. Then Ooh, that's see, how it is. This is little. Yeah. Literally, literally, Ooh, this is game right yeah. here. This is real. Okay. Uh, this is uh, this is experience. All right. So listen. This is what we got to do. We got to do. We can't get to the rest of the flashing lights because Arana wanted to have an interview mm. with mm. John. Blame so, me. hey, how did this affect your whiteness? Because <laughs> I can see you getting a little darker because of the conversation that was... Uh, I've been dark. Been dark. Okay, now you're going too far. He's what? crossed the line. Let's Whoa. beat his ass. Let's, let's jump in <laughs> later on. Okay, final summations. <laughs> We're going to start with Whitney. Oh, hello. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, get gotta get my sexy baby. voice on. Gotta get my sexy voice. Nah, man. Like, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm feeling a little bit better than before. When I first walked in here, I'm like, we're not ending racism. I'm sorry. Yeah, we are. I, I don't know. I'm pretty much on the fence. But <laughs> I think that one way we can start to try to show the other side how off balance it is, is, like I said, the money and, and athletes. Stop, stop entertaining them. If that's all we are to them, then let's stop that and show them that we're something else. But uh, wow. that's that's really what I got going on. Everybody have a great weekend. Hit me on Instagram, Twitter, at Miss Tabor, and I'm out. I can smoke a bag of that. Arana. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, folks out there in Radio Land. <sighs> Zoe just farted. Listen. <laughs> Guys, we have to have knowledge of self. And we also need to have more financial literacy classes in our communities. That would be a great after-school program. And also, we should take advantage of technology, sharing and spreading more knowledge. So, knowledge is power. And I'll just stop right there because I could say more. We all know that. Arana Lopez at Arana Lopez 100. Yes. Ronica. I would, I would say that um, we have got to stop being a living, breathing reaction to white supremacy. We have to stop basing our identity on being a reaction to something that is against us. One of the reasons, for example, that I did the Black Mastery Program, and we're about to do this Black Mastery World Summit, is because it is a time to put an exclamation point on planet Earth where we have to decide who we are going to be independent of what comes at us, independent of what they think of us. We have to stop reacting and have to start actually living into our our most powerful future. We have to decide that. Wow. Here's some tips for ending racism. Renounce Michael Jordan. And everything he stands for and every black man that's like him. Anybody that's willing to participate in a system that gives two shakes of a fat rat's ass about you, mm. you got to renounce it. Renounce history. It is. Renounce his version of history. Renounce the white supremacist version of success. Right? Your dollar has to stay in your community longer than six hours. 
How about that? Don't be afraid to put yourself and people and your people in harm's way, meaning don't be afraid to come together and buy banks. Black mm. banks. Only 38 black banks exist in America. Only 38. Get some black banks. Own your own education. What's, you feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Start making uh, inroads to purchasing your own educational institutions. Mm-hmm. You want to end racism? Stop looking for his approval. Stop asking for him to, to, to acknowledge your greatness. You acknowledge it. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, man, I'm Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. This is what we do. I don't feel like we've ended racism, but hopefully we started something. Let's keep the fucking dialogue going. I got love for y'all next week. We're going to be back on that relationship grind. Mm-hmm. It's going to be crazy. And I'm rescheduling with Brother David Banner. He'll be back. And that's what's up. Holla at y'all next week. Love y'all. Peace.